In today's lesson, we are going to learn about acid-base titration. So what is titration? It is a procedure for determining the volume of two solutions, acid and base, which will exactly neutralize one another. And this is done by using a solution of known concentration, also called the standard solution, and the concentration of another solution can be determined. The solution of known concentration called the standard solution is placed in the buren and it is called the titron. The other reactant is placed in the flask or it's called analyte and an indicator is added. The titron is then added gradually until the completion of neutralization is signaled by an indicator. This point is called the end point. The volume of titrant used for the reaction is read from the Buret scale. Because the titration technique is based on the reactant's volume, it is also called volumetric analysis. In learning titration, there are a few terms that you will need to know. Let us see what equivalence point is. The equivalent point is the point at which the amount of acid and base present exactly neutralizes one another. Or it is said that the number of moles of hydroxide ions is stoichiometrically equivalent to the number of moles of hydrogen ions. Let us look at an example. For a neutralization reaction between hydrochloric acid HCl and sodium hydroxide NaOH, the balance equation shows that one mole of hydrochloric acid requires one mole of sodium hydroxide for complete neutralization. Therefore, 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid would require 0.1 mole of sodium hydroxide for complete neutralization. Similarly, for the neutralization reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide, the balance equation shows that one mole of sulfuric acid requires two moles of sodium hydroxide for complete neutralization. Therefore, 0.1 mole of sulfuric acid would require 0.2 mole of sodium hydroxide for complete neutralization. Another important term that you will need to know in titration is the end point. The end point of a titration is the point when the indicator changes color. So when an indicator changes color, you would need to stop the titration. As you know, an indicator is needed in a titration. An indicator is a substance that is generally added to the solution in the receiving flask, which undergoes some sort of color change when the reaction is over. It is important to choose a suitable indicator to be used for a titration. You will need to choose an indicator which the endpoint pH range lies on the steep part of the titration curve. And this choice ensures that the pH at the equivalent point will fall within the range over which the indicator changes color. We will study in more detail how to choose a suitable indicator for the various titrations in the upcoming videos. In the table here, you would see some common acid-base indicators used. Each indicator has its own color in the acidic medium and also its color in the basic medium. The pH range here is defined as the range over which the indicator will change its color from the acidic 
color to the basic color.